Have you ever been to the beach and wonder how one of these is built? You're in the right place. Welcome to Texas Coastal Construction. My name is Jason. I am the owner of Stella Builders LLC and I specialize in building beautiful beach homes just like this one right here in the upper Texas coast. In this video series on Texas coastal construction, I'm going to walk through step by step how to build one of these. And I just might give you some helpful construction tips for any construction project along the way. So video one of these series is all about these guys pilings. So hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let's go build a house. So pilings are the foundation on any elevated house, and they can be made from a bunch of different things. Sometimes they're made from concrete, sometimes they're made from cinder blocks, or sometimes they're made like these guys behind me, and big logs of treated timber. So the beach house that we're getting ready to start building, the finished floor, is going to be almost 23 foot above sea level. That thing's up there. So concrete or anything other than a wood timber piling simply isn't an option. But how do you know how long they have to be? Well, to determine that, you need two things. The first thing you need is a construction elevation certificate provided by a survey company, and you need a set of engineering plans from a structural engineer. So if you look up here, you will see a copy of our construction elevation certificate on the house that we are getting started to build. Section A is all about the location, but section B is the important part. In section B, we will find our flood zone, which if you look close, you in the highlighted area, you will see we are in a VE flood zone. And you will see our BFE, which is our base flood elevation is 17. So we are in a VE-17 flood zone for this house. So if you look up here, you will see page two of our construction elevation certificate. And on that, there is four really important numbers that we need to know. The first number is what is called our finished floor elevation. You'll see in this, that is 23. That means our first floor of our house needs to be 23 feet above sea level. The next you will see in line C is our lowest member. The lo that means the lowest member of our house. In our cases, it's called our stringers, which I will, I'll go over that here in a little bit. That number is 21, which means the lowest part of our house has to be 21 feet above sea level. The next two lines you're going to see is our lag and our hag. Our lag is our lowest adjacent grade and our hag is our highest adjacent grade. So what you are going to see is that they are both 6.3, which means our lot is flat. So thanks to our elevation certificate, we were able to determine our flood zone, the lowest member of our house, how high that needs to be above sea level, and we were able to determine our lag and our hag. These are all really important numbers when determining how long our pilings need to be. The next step is we need our structural engineering plans. Now all engineers do this differently, but the number one thing that we need to determine the length of our pilings is how far do we gotta put them into the ground? So my engineer, this is found back in a later section, but if you look up here, you see that number down at the bottom, the number 15? That tells us that our pilings need to be driven 15 feet into the ground. Okay, so let's break this down. So our goal for our lowest member, which is our BOS, our bottom of stringer, is to be 21 feet above sea level. 
That is our ultimate goal for this house. So in order to determine that, we need all of these numbers over here. So we need our piling depth, which our engineer said these pilings have to be driven 15 feet into the ground. So that number goes right there, your piling depth. The other number is your FFE, your finished floor elevation. Our EC said that our finished floor elevation needed to be 23 feet above sea level. So you put that number there. The other thing we need to subtract then is our lag or our hag, our lowest adjacent grade. Now on this lot, this lot is flat so that both the lag and the hag were 6.3. So we take our finished floor elevation, which is 23, we add the piling depth, which is 15, and then we subtract 6.3, which means we need 31.7 feet of piling. Now, pilings come in increments of two, 30, 32, 34. If we were to order a 32 foot piling, we have 0.3 wiggle room to hit our goal. That's not a lot of room. So for our purposes, the pilings that we are going to be ordering for this house are going to be 34 foot long. But how do you know how many you need? Okay, so to determine how many pilings we need, we go to this. This is our piling callout page within our structural engineering plans. Now on this page, you're going to see a whole bunch of different numbers. One of those is P12. That P12 tells us that our pilings need to be 12 inches in diameter. So we need to order 12 by 12s. You also see all the different pilings. If you count all those up, we need to order 18 pilings. So to order our pilings for this house, we need to order 18 12 inch by 12 inch by 34 foot pilings. So we're on day two of construction. Our pilings are in and we're ready to start framing, right? Wrong. 
Once your pilings are installed, but before you can start framing, there's multiple steps that need to happen. The first thing is inspections. You're going to need your past year municipal inspection, whether you're building in a county or in a city. The next and the most important is you're going to need to pass an engineering inspection. Your engineers, they want to see and make sure the correct number of pilings are installed. They want to check the distance between each piling, but most importantly, they want to check to make sure that the majority of them, if not all of them, reach the proper depth. Sometimes that's just simply not possible because you never know what is beneath the ground, but most of the time that is not an issue. The next thing that I recommend, especially if you live in a wooded area, is getting a subterranean termite treatment around your pilings. Any good pest, in, pest person can take care of that for you. And the third thing is we need surveys. The first survey that you're going to need is what is called either a form survey or a piling survey. That simply puts and lets you know where your pilings are in relationship to your setbacks, to your easements, and to your property boundaries. These are super, super important. And they also let you know how much room you have to play with if you need to add things like steps, decks, AC platforms, and the likes of that because no portion of this house can be over either your setback, an easement, or your property line. I have seen videos of builders that needed to rip down entire houses because they were over an easement or a setback. Don't let that happen to you. The second survey and the one that is absolutely critical is we need what is called a piling nail or a piling height benchmark. Your piling or your survey company will come out and they will put this on your piling and this is a measurement above elevation or above sea level. We have to cut these. If you cut them too short, you can stretch them. And if your house is too short, it is uninsurable because it won't meet your standard base flood elevation or BFE requirements. So this gives you a, an accurate measurement above sea level that we can measure up from here so we know exactly where to cut these pilings to ensure that our house will meet our base flood elevation. All right, everyone, well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you found this video informative, maybe push that like button or give it a share. If you wanna join us for the journey on how to build a coastal house over 20 foot up in the air, push the subscribe button. Until then, bull reds are running, there's light in the sky, so I'm gonna hit the water. We'll catch you on the next episode of Texas Coastal Construction. See you later.